Okay, today's video, we're gonna be looking how to make these cells. We made these cells from scratch using mus nothing more than beads and sand cement. So that's what we're gonna be looking at today. Hope you enjoy the video. Yep. Okay, so what we have here, this is basically a lintel. It's just a lintel that's been put in underneath the windows and our job is to try and make it look decent. So what we've done is we've coated it with render grit. I know it's got a bit of render on top, but we'll clean it off. And this is this stuff. This is Seeker Render Key Coat. Basically you put this on any smooth surface to give it a key ready for rendering. So what we're gonna do is make these cells up. We're gonna put some beads on. Just try and make them look half decent. Obviously this doesn't look too appealing at the moment, but our job is to make it look nice. So before we start, I want to address something. Throughout the beginning of the video, I've got my hood up. And it's not because I think I'm gangster. It's because I cut all my hair off. So, so if you think I'm trying to be a thug man, it's not. I was bloody cold. So that's what it is. So that's the elephant. That's dealt with. Let's deal with the video. and Let's see how we can get these lintels looking good. See you in a bit. Okay, so we've got some plastic beads here. These are the thin line ones. So we don't want too much thickness on the cells. So we've just got the thin coat beads here, plastic. And um, just gonna cut them in size, just stick them straight on. And this is the stuff I recommend. I've got some T-Rex high strength grab adhesive. Stick the beads on with this, just cause it's so much easier to get them in line, make them level. And this stuff really does grab. You probably could use grip fill. It doesn't have the tackiness this stuff has. But anything, any adhesive really that you could use, don't really matter which one. But the T-Rex stuff is pretty good. So, what I'm gonna do is just line them up, put them in place, and good rule of thumb is to check the area first, see if it's level. This is pretty bad, so I'm gonna have to raise it up. So I know this end needs to have a bit more adhesive than the other, just so I can pack it up. So what I'm going to do is measure them out, stick them on, check in for level as I go, and then cut the side sections on, followed by the underside. So it's a fairly simple process, you've just got to make sure all the angles meet and it's level and it's plumb at the edges. So let's do it. When you're putting the adhesive on, just be generous, put big blobs on. And that way we can use it to pack out for any thickness that we need to do. So a nice, generous amount. Whack it on like that. And then you're good to stick it on. Make sure all the angles meet up nicely. Then what you want to do is grab your little scraper, push all that glue in there. That's it, it should be on. Easy. Okay, so we've got the beads on there. Now what we're gonna do we're gonna have to dust the top off. You have to prepare this. What we're gonna do is put a scratch coat on the whole area. Um, that's because the thickness here is a lot, but not only that, we want to make sure the beads are tight and firm before we put the top coat on, otherwise it might move and make the render drummy. So first thing, brush the top off, get rid of all the dust. It's been about an hour for this stuff and it dries rapid to be fair. It's quite good stuff, look, don't move them too hard, but get rid of the area there. 
rid of all that. And then we can start preparing it for the scratch coat. What I've got here, this is SBR. What we're gonna do is wet the tops and then we're gonna start. Well, the last thing you want is you can never put render dry for sills. They'll just go drummy, they won't get a bond. What you need is to put either some water, but SBR would be better so we can get a tight bond to the substrate behind it. That way it's gonna have a nice thick seal on the side. If you don't apply it when it's wet, it won't fix and it'll come drummy. So that's what we're gonna do. So you've got your SBI. You're gonna whack a decent amount on the top, on the sides, any way you can. And then whilst it's still wet and there's water, quickly throw your render on. You need to make sure that the render has got contact with moisture before it can before you can start applying it to the sills. Just so you make sure it's hard and it's got a solid grip. So whack it on. Show you got it all the edges. And whilst it's still wet, get your render. Gauging trial, it's a bit easier to use these for this type of work. A bit easier to control. And really push it into every area. Actually, I'll show you. So it's wet underneath, push it into all the edges there. Just have to be clean about it. We we'll take the windows. This is the important bit, where the edge is, make sure you push the render into the bead. You really want to make sure it get, gets all the render in between the beads. It's got a nice grip. And then just straighten it off. This is just a scratch. Gonna do is put this on, wait for it to dry a little bit, and then scratch it up. But you just want a base coat that's got a firm grip to the to the sill underneath. That's it. Whack that on. Gonna do is put the same on again, pushing it tight into the beads. Put a bit on the sides, and then gonna put a scratch and then let it dry, ready for the top coat. Well, that's it. Put the same down there, squeeze it in. I was bloody cold. Back. Easy. Hey, so it's all on. Render's on. Just gonna give it a little scratch. This is so when the top coat goes on, we'll have a good key for the next bit. All over. And you let it dry. Now come back to it in a few hours when the render's taken up a bit. Happy days. Okay, well now we're gonna put the top coat on. So as you can see, got it scratched. We're doing it the same day. It's been about two, three hours later. So it's still a bit, still quite, it's gone hard, but it's still a bit wet. So it's a good time to put the top coat on. So it kind of binds at the same time. Just a little tip here. What I've done is put some frog tape 
just along the line. That's to protect the windows, but it's also to give us an idea on where to run the line. So when we're running a straight, straight render across, we know we've got a line to follow almost, a nice little guide. What he's gonna do is gonna put a little bit of SBR on again, just to kind of give that, give that suction from the top coat to the scratch. Should be fine with that, because it's still quite tacky, but I'm just gonna play it safe, because it's always best to make sure your sills are nice and packed. So we're gonna do is build it out, build it out to the beads, the sides, and we're gonna start getting a shape for where we want it. So we've got to make sure it's just above the window there. We've got a slight angle, so when the water hits, it's gonna fall down. Again, it's just a bit of SDR. Put a little bit on there, you don't have to go crazy. So the top coat's got something to bind to. Really push it into the scratch. Make sure you're getting it into the scratch nice and tight. Same with the front. Same with the sides, you want to put a decent amount on. What we're going to do is just put the, put the render on. Don't worry if it's proud, we're going to let that dry. It's got to bind into the scratch. Good little idea is use your hawk straight edge. Should be forming the bottom angles. Squeeze it in. Hold the render and then pull away. We're going to build it up to the sill height.
Now what we do, you want to let it dry. Don't play with it. I'm going to let it dry and then we're going to rule it off. Get this top level, level with a level. And then after that, we're going to start making sure it's right. But for now, just let the render dry. Don't play with it. Okay, so it's been about half an hour. Let the render dry a little bit, but it's still at the point where you can rule it off. Um, if you do it too soon, you just pull it off, it'll be hard work. But at this stage, is a nice stage. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put the level on at the moment, see how we're doing. Oh. So this back edge is way too high. I'm just going to rule it off. Doing. So that's bang on right there. So we're going to use that line there. This is just a bit of off cut of door actually. It's not special. <laughs> so anything that's straight you can use for ruling off. Just make sure it's straight. <laughs> I'm going to do the rest of that now. Just using it to rule off any excess. Give that skim over now. See how that's looking. So that is bang on. And got no gaps between the level and the render so that is a good point to be at what we're going to do if there is any little dips we can get it when we're floating but for now that is pretty good so that's that give it a little quick trowel any little gaps we can get when we're floating but for now so rule that bit off. We'll start trying to clean the edges now. Make sure they're neat. I'm just gonna clean this up a bit. That looks a bit proud, so I'm gonna cut that back. Cut them. Cut the excess back. Clean up the sides. Don't want to take too much off the face because when we're when we're floating up, you want a bit to play with. And finally, we're just going to check the underside. Rule off any excess there. Now, the most important stage rendering, waiting. Got to wait for this now to take up. Don't play with it. We've got it pretty much ruled off. We're going to wait now. Wait for it to dry and then we can start floating it. And then from there we're going to get a smooth finish from the render. So for now, don't play with it. I know it's hard, but just wait. <laughs> Alright, so now I'm going to finish this bad boy off. I'm going to wet the top. Give it a little bit of a spruce. As you can see, that's just livened up the render nicely. Ready for when. When you're floating it, work to your edge of your bead. I'm just trying to fill in any gaps now. So any high spots, take them off. in this little sheet, yeah? Tap that back. It's annoying, isn't it? It's gonna stay. Better. Let's carry on. So what we're doing is flattening and we're filling any areas that weren't filled from the from the trowel. 
it's called floating. And do clockwork circular motions, taking away any high spots and filling in any low spots. What it's doing is compressing the render. Just gonna give it one more check with the level. All right, so it's flat, it's level, which is lovely. Take that off. So happy with that. Now we're just gonna fill the edges in. So you want this quite wet, which is why I threw some water on, because I'm going to be troweling it smooth. I'm not going to leave it textured. I'm just going to trowel the render smooth. So get that bit done. That's a bit dry. Put a bit of water on the front there. It's lovely stuff. It really just bubbles up again. Lovely. edge now, that front edge. Wet your trowel up. Now we're going to get it smooth. Sharp your edges in the reveals, clean them up. So, what it's doing is, is the steel from the trowel is bringing all the moisture to the front of the render, which is giving it that nice smooth finish. But it's got to be steel trowel to do that. Magnesium wouldn't bring the moisture up. So you just, if you've got a bit of a dry spot, wet your trowel up. Clean off your edges now. Wet that up. Get that ledge. Now we're getting this front edge. I think it actually needs a bit more under there, so float that, get a bit of gear. Literally just throw a bit on and float it back on, fill the gaps. Clean your 
beats. And that's it. It's done. So that's it, there are the finished sills, too bad, clean on the edges, running straight. That's how you do it, so that's how you make your own sills from scratch. Hope you enjoyed the video, if you did, please like, please subscribe, make sure you keep your heads out for any more videos from us. To learn the full process of plastering where we're doing internally as well as externally, sign up to our free welcome course for plastering beginners. Thanks so much for watching, see you on the next one, cheers.